Don't you want to die happy With a smile on your face Wake up for laughing <laughs> Cause you're free of all the things That would hold you From your ocean view Life's a landscape Why don't you be well, it's a miserable, rainy Tuesday morning, isn't it, Chris? It was intense last night. Did you hear that? How long was it raining for last night? Oh, like all night. Was it? Because I, yeah. I woke up in, in the dark mm-hmm. for my, probably my three o'clock bathroom visit. <laughs> Martin, you're getting old, man. <laughs> I am. <clears throat> I need to do some more work on my prostate, I think. Oh, buddy. So, yeah, and my pond is full this morning. Your pond is full. We have an empty pond. I didn't know you had a pond. Yeah, we have a pond. Well, it's not a pond until it's got water in it, so it was not a pond until last night. We had an empty, um, tiled and concrete hole in the ground. (laughs) Okay, that's better. And now it is a pond. So I'm actually thinking, do you know anything about ponds? Hmm. I don't know. I used to fish, so maybe. What do you need to know? Well, I'm thinking about... Getting some fish and oh, yeah, okay. putting a filter in it, and you know, nice. like doing fishy stuff. Oh, cool! Yeah, I love that. It's all because it's all set up. It's just that the there are, and there are two like holes where you're supposed to put the filters. So you're, it's pretty. I need to buy a filter, and I need to buy some fish and some lily pads or something. Yeah, some. yeah, yeah. But I was thinking because it's quite a big pond, and we've got a lot of mosquitoes now at our place because it's obviously rainy season. You can get fish that eat mosquitoes, can't you? I mean, I know all fish mm-hmm. eat mosquitoes, but you can get certain fish that that have a proclivity, a leaning toward the mosquito. Leaning. Yes, I have heard those. I don't know what they are, but yeah. Well, yes. that's that's what I'm interested in. I was I was hoping that your pond story was going to lead us into today's topic. <laughs> I was like, wow, what's he going to do here with the pond and love fish? I don't know. Well, did you love to fish? Yeah, I think there was a time where I loved to fish. But yeah. we're not talking about that kind of love, are we? We're not. No. We were talking about romantic love. Romantic love. So, romantic so I'm intrigued. Love. I've been intrigued since since we decided we we're going to have this conversation because it, you you chose this topic. I did. So, so I was intrigued <laughs> as to why you wanted to talk about romantic love. But I thought first thing we could do mm-hmm. is a little game. Cool. Song names with love in the title. <laughs> oh wow! That's All like you need is love. Cyclopedia. Uh, don't tell me you love me. Stupid That's, love. Uh, love. Love boat. Love me do. <laughs> love shack. I will love you forever. <laughs> Modern love. Uh, love me. I love me. Love is a battlefield. I don't know if that's a... It's song lyrics. I don't know if that's in the title. Well, the so, the this is a song title game, Chris. Well, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Crazy little thing called love. Ah, oh, nice. God, you're good. See, I... Everyone should know that Martin did not prep me for this. No, I didn't prep me for this. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just I just thought it would be a good idea this morning. It is a good idea. I like it. I'm just trying to think. I can think of a lot of song lyrics with love. Well, I think we should just perhaps end the game on a tie and invite <laughs> our listeners to add as many songs with the name love in the comments as you possibly can. Yeah, that sounds good. Sure. So, yeah. Romantic love. Mm, mm -hmm. What inspired you to want to have a conversation about romantic love, Chris? Well, you texted me, and you put a little bit of the pressure on. Mm -hmm. You said, Chris, I want to have you on the podcast. I was like, great, that's awesome. And then you said, I want you to tell me what you're feeling as far as the the topic. Mm. The first thing, as you remember, the first thing that came to mind was minimalism. Yes. Because, you know, that's, I think you know this about me. That's a pretty big thing for me. I actually didn't. You didn't know that, really? I didn't. And, and it kind of is for me. Yeah. As well. Although yeah. I say kind of because I bought all of this equipment for the podcast and I actually feel like I'm cheating on my, on my minimalist 
foundations. I don't think you are. I think this is all necessity. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that was the first thing that came to mind. And then I thought romantic love because we're in Bali and it's, it, it's a thing here. It's a thing everywhere, but I think it's a, a thing especially here. Romance. Romance, yeah. Hmm. In what way? Well, you know, Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> I am familiar with that movie. Have you watched it, or are you just familiar with it? I've watched it like a million times. Jules oh, and I wow. watched it two weekends ago. Okay. I love that film. Okay, that's awesome. I'm only asking because I have I didn't watch it up until about two months ago. What? I, I know, I know. I had never seen it. Man. Remember the scene when she's with the young, like curly hair, blonde Aussie dude? I think. Yeah, that's he a takes, bit of a cringe worthy. Super cringe. Scene, yeah. Super cringe. But he takes his shirt off and he starts loving, yelling at her. He's like, everybody needs to have a love affair in Bali. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a bad Australian accent. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't going for the Aussie accent. I was just, just trying to get the line right. If everybody needs to have a good love affair in Bali. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. that kind of stuck with me because there is, there, is something, there is something about this fantasy life here in paradise that I think uh, pushes... Yeah people into that space of romantic love hmm. and it just it, it causes some things to fire in our brains and our body that makes us more susceptible I say susceptible because I do think that it's a, love is a dangerous thing and actually you are vulnerable and susceptible when you start feeling those things so yeah the, I don't know my thoughts I don't know where do you want to start man I got a lot to say about it well the, 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 you've already created a, a, a can of worms that requires an opening I think mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah I, I, I suppose I suppose I can see where you're going with this so so is this more about is this about people on their holidays or is this about travelers is this about transients is this about a transient um, Love affair. Back to the back to Eat, Pray, Love for a moment. Yeah, she was for anyone who hasn't read or read the book or seen the movie. I, I doubt there are any many people who haven't read the book or seen the movie. But uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, great writer, takes a year off uh, her job as a writer to go and I go, find herself. Right, it's, it's fair to say. Um, and so she eats in Italy. She learns to pray in India, and she finds love in Bali. And it's over a year. So I don't know... I haven't read the book. I've only seen the movie about 55, six times. Um, so I don't know how transient that plan was for her, whether or not I actually she could have extended it. Or My point being that if you know you go into a place for a few months, only a few months, and then you're returning to your life in America, the UK, Finland, wherever... Finland? Where did Finland come Finland. from? <laughs> Finland. Have you ever been to Finland? No. I haven't. I have. I meet people from all over the world. I have yet to meet anybody from Finland. It's, it's very strange that Finland just popped out then. I, I must make it. Strange, I've got to make yeah. a mental note of that. Yeah. If I was channeling something there. I want to go to Norway. Uh, I feel a strong call into Norway. Me too. Me too. I'm not sure if I've got... I might have some, uh, some of my Viking roots there. Who knows? Probably. Anyway. But we digress. I definitely digress <laughs> there. All the way to Finland. <laughs> But the point being, if you're on a sh if you're on a trip like that, I guess you would you say to yourself, one thing I'm not going to do is fall in love. I don't know. It seems to be the opposite for the women I meet here in Bali that are coming here and doing the eat, pray, love Julia Roberts thing because it, obviously that movie had a, a huge impact on the culture of well, well of. Cult Western culture, but also Balinese culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was talking specifically about Western culture, but it, it inspired. It, I think it's safe to say, safe to say that it inspired a lot of people to go and find themselves. Yes, exactly. And maybe it was yeah. just kind of the modern example of that. Of course, it's been going on for, for a very long time. But you, so you ask your, the question: If you were going to go on a trip like that, do the Julia Roberts go find yourself thing? Would you would you open yourself up to romantic love, or would you intentionally say, "No, I'm finding myself. I'm cutting myself off from romantic love." The ironic thing is that man or woman, it seems to me that as soon as somebody does that, says, "No, I am concentrating on myself. 
I am, this is for me, I'm exploring myself. As soon as they do that, they immediately become way more attractive. <laughs> somebody, and somebody is like, no, you're not. I'm gonna, I'm going to make sure that I get, I get you. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall in love with you. You're gonna fall in love with me because it, there is something attractive about that. Somebody saying, no, this is about me. So that's, mm. I guess what I would say, that's the ironic thing. And I don't know the answer to that question. I know that my experience with a lot of the women that come here to Bali and I'm talking specifically about women because that's I'm a heterosexual man, so that's I don't know how it is to fall in love with a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they very much leave themselves open to falling in love, regardless of whether or not they're doing the Julia Roberts eat, pray, love thing. So you think a lot of the women coming here are leaving themselves open to love? No, that's that's probably a sweeping generalization. So I'm, I'm summing up what you said. I don't know, in, man. Accurately. I mean, it could be a sweeping generalization. I, <laughs> okay. We could do a survey. Aren't you doing surveys now? Uh, Q&As? Yeah, although... I love I, that you're doing that. I always forget to do it, yeah. Okay, well, you should sometimes. do one for this Okay, we will sure. do a Q&A, yeah. which appears on Spotify, doesn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify... Uh, and you have an opinion about Chris's potentially <laughs> incendiary comments, <laughs> then please do engage. They're definitely potentially incendiary. Engage, engage as you will with our Q&A on the subject. Yes, well, I, I think you're right. I think it probably is a sweeping generalization. Maybe he's, he's backtracking there, kids. <laughs> Walk it but back. I don't know. Walk let's, it back. let's see the results of the survey. We'll <laughs> see, man. Or maybe, maybe it's just that regardless of what your intent is, that being here and the process of finding yourself in that process, it is, it is highly likely that you will at least, like I said, attract someone that's going to find that very attractive, that you are quote unquote finding yourself. Or that's that's part of that's part of the exploration. I mean, that you could make the argument that finding romantic love and starting a family, you know, all that stuff is kind of the ultimate in the the human experience. One could say that. I'm not saying for sure that it is, but if that's true, then when you do the Julia Roberts eat, pray, love thing, then of course that's that could be part of it. I don't know. I take issue with the whole finding ourselves thing. I think our generations, my generation, has taken it way too far. I think your generation has been a little bit more balanced with it mm -hmm. because you're still kind of connected to more of the the stability of the old world, and you're not so egocentric mm. and narcissistic like my generation is. Mm. I think my generation has taken this whole find yourself bullshit and just taken it to the extreme really like, yeah for sure and then that makes it hard the reason i bring it up in the context of this conversation that makes it hard to find romantic love or lasting romantic love but jump in there martin yeah wow you just said so many things i need to I know, comment i'm on. sorry i'm sorry i'm just like i'm on one this morning <laughs> well while you were talking i did also think of the movie the beach this has got nothing to do with romance because actually he doesn't. That's not a romance story, is it? But there is a romance in it. Yeah, and there's always some romance in every Hollywood movie. But it, but that was another for me, for my generation. It's my generation. It was probably a little bit. When was that? It was the nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But that was another um, epic movie that came out that sort of. I think gave people an awful lot of that travel, that wonderlust. Yeah, you know yeah, that different yeah. kind of wonderlust. Can we have another coffee? Yeah, man, of course we can. Do a laggy. If you like and subscribe, if you follow, we will fly. If you like and subscribe, if you follow, we will fly. If you like and subscribe, if you follow, we will fly. If you like and subscribe, if you follow, we will fly. So, might we suppose that people who go to, and Martin's doing air quotes, find themselves? The air quotes are appropriate for saying that, so yeah. Doing it, obviously, we all go and do these things for different reasons. So that I don't think we can create a sweeping generalization in, in this particular topic. But I think what we can say is a lot of people soul search elsewhere out with their traditional environment because they don't feel as though they're getting emotional or, or intellectual stimulus, the nutrients, if you like, that they need to grow. 
And quite clearly, if we are, if we do spend all of our time in the same environment, we're only going to, you know, if you always did what you, if you always do what you always did, then you're always going to get what you always got, right? Indeed. And of yeah. course, traveling to the Far East, for example, because that's where Bali is. It's in Indonesia, everyone, just in case you didn't know. Are you surprised how many people don't know I that? I know. <laughs> That's actually why I said it, just in case. People are like, are there like multiple islands in Bali? Which actually there are, but... Well, yeah, but Bali is one of 47,000 Indonesian islands, isn't it? Yeah, but we digress again. We digress. (laughs) But it's the How To Die Happy podcast. This is what we do. Where was I? So when people come to a country like this for an extended period of travel, I suppose one of the things you might be interested in doing is healing or growing your heart and what I mean by that is often we have a closed heart because of the emotional damage we've had you know, somebody hurts many people hurt us actually we've been hurt since we were born and uh, and every other relationship we've had since then has been um I don't want to say toxic, but there would have been some toxicity in it. <clears throat> My point being um, that they might not have been particularly healthy relationships thanks to our own, our own pathology, right? Our own psychological pathology. So there isn't this, this idea that we have a closed heart. And if we've got a closed heart, then coming to a place like Bali is, is more often than not likely to crack that if you do some of the work. Certainly that's what happened to me. You know, I opened my heart in this, uh, on this beautiful island and I learned to love myself on this island. And it, was only, and it was through doing that work that then I realized, oh, wow, okay, this explains a lot. This is why I've actually never been able to have a successful romantic relationship. Mm. You didn't love yourself, you dingbat. <laughs> but you're so lovable. <laughs> you do? Oh, that's very kind of me to say. Work I see, bro. Well, you just, yeah, you said it in a much more elegant. Thank you. Eloquent and elegant. Yeah, Makasi. Eloquent? Elegant? Uh, eloquently. Both. Oh, nice. I mean, you could be which eloquent. Which one do you want? Uh, I think they're the same, aren't they? Yeah, I know, but which design do you, you like? You have the one. Can I have this one? You have that one. You have the fleur de lis, and I'll have the. Um, the fleur de lis? Fo- four leaf clover. Dope. Yeah, that was a very, very nice way to put it, Martin. <clears throat> Love your way with words. That's, Thank you. That is, that is very visual, very spot on, very poetic, but also very practical. You have a gift, my friend, with those words. You are too kind. That's true, though. I love you, Chris. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> romantic, but not in a, I mean, maybe romantic. I don't oh, know. I've got a little bit of a romantic a pre- love for in you. In a previous life. I don't know. Not in this current iteration, just because of my biology and yours, but... Who knows, in a past <laughs> life, perhaps we were lovers. You always make me laugh. It's hard to make me laugh early in the morning. <laughs> Usually I'm just like, I know. get the fuck away from me. <laughs> I know that too. Can I cuss on this? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, no. back to yeah, the yeah, post. Yeah, 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 no, it's... Yeah, go, 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 go. Well, also, all I was going to add to that was, if we have lived in a certain way for a long time and and it's been for a, for a lot of people probably in fight flight or freeze mode right and suddenly we have uh, a spiritual or emotional or energetic experience in a place like Bali which happens all the time that suddenly just goes boom and then the heart chakra pops and we're going fuck Woo! I'm vibrating. You know, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. love. <clears throat> and I can see why for a lot of people, then the next obvious aspiration is to turn around and share that. And I can see how for a lot of people that might not be healthy. Or it might, perhaps it's too early is the way to look at it. Right, right. You know, because suddenly you're experiencing all of these new feelings. And, and I, I've met lots of people in Bali who have had similar, um, who were on similar journeys yeah. to, to, to that which you mentioned earlier. I came here, I suppose, for that. Not to find love, uh, but to eat, pray, and love. 
<laughs> just as a, a little uh, sidestep, the, apparently af- after that movie came out mm-hmm. and Balinese tourism skyrocketed yeah. and, and the place was very quickly overrun, apparently they, they were selling T-shirts and vests that said eat, pray, leave on them. Uh, yeah, see, that's I can get behind that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat, pray, li- oh, wow, that's going to be my new Eat, pray, motto. get out of here. Yeah, eat, pray, leave. <laughs> eat, pray, make like a leaf and get out of nice. here. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, anyway, another digression. But but that's a good one, though. Glad so, what, so what do you think about that? Do you, does that make sense? It makes so much sense. And actually, next time I'm explaining to somebody this phenomenon... I'm going to take that clip of you just describing it and I'm going to play it for them because you captured it so perfectly and so beautifully. I don't think that I could say it any better. I may be able to add a little bit to it. Of course. A little personal flavor, not giving too much away. A little peppering of Chris. Yeah, a little peppering of Chris. Yeah, it makes complete sense. And I, as you were talking, I was just, I was imagining myself. I was imagining other people that I've met in Bali and seeing that kind of story play out over and over and over again and not really ever being able to put my finger on it the way that you just did but knowing intuitively like there was something going on i think that's the a great way to to put it you crack the heart open that heart chakra stuff i don't know i you know i a little bit limited with the the spiritual lingo well the reality is we don't need to it doesn't need to be a spiritual conversation either ultimately it is just this uh it's a transformational place where people undergo transformational experiences. You name it, it's on offer here. You could do yoga. You could do Kundalini yoga or Kundalini awakening and suddenly go, whoa, what what was that? Excuse me. Or sound healing or meditation um, um, or a great many other things. The the, the point is that uh, for, for everybody, it's a different transformational experience, isn't it? But for many, there is a moment where suddenly... Boom! Mm-hmm. Hallelujah! You know the, the angels sing, and people go, "Geez, wow, hang on, yeah, what, and what's happened to me?" And then, and then all of a sudden, the there is an opening here. I'm pointing at my chest. If you're not watching the video, you're sending out this newfound energy. But of course, then you're open to new energy as well. And so, playing to the point you made about actually, it's ironically more attractive. Yeah. 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 I think, I, I mean, I, I'd not really thought about it that way, but I, I suppose, yeah, many people would be attracted to the idea that someone is actually self-realizing. Yeah, and, and turning on and tuning in, as Timothy Leary would say. But not dropping out. But not dropping out, yeah. Yeah, it, okay, so there's a couple things, if I, if I may. Please. So because of this, I call it a phenomenon because it's, I think it's the best way to, for me to describe it right now. Because of this phenomenon, I have been very, especially over the past six months or so, since I've been here longer, you know, it's been almost two years since I've been here. I have been more skeptical about this when I sense this from people, whether it's, I mean, from women, Oops, yeah, from women. Because I see this and I'm like, okay, it'll pass, right? Like I... I met this uh, girl. Sorry, know, just to interrupt you. What yeah, will yeah. pass? Just for the, clarity's the, sake. The, yeah, yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. The feeling. That feeling. The feeling yeah. that they're in love? Or <clears throat> yes. Yeah, with you? Feeling. No, no, not with me necessarily. Okay. Like I met this girl uh, a couple weeks ago, and she was telling me about this guy that she met. Mm-hmm. And like she was just a, a friend of a friend. You know, there was nothing romantic between us. But she was telling me about this guy, and she had a conversation with him for about 20 minutes. And she was just completely smitten, so much so that she was trying to get me to track him down. She didn't know his name. She just knew his nationality. We connected. And yeah, I tried. I actually did know somebody that had this exact <laughs> mix of nationalities, which is kind of a unique mix. I'm not going to say it on the podcast because I don't want to blow, blow her spot up. But, <laughs> but she's like, and I'm not like this. That's what she said. She's like, I'm not normally like this. But I just I had this conversation with him, and I just immediately I saw I saw little babies with him and I saw a future together. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it'll pass though. And I just kind of laughed because it's not not laughing at her, but just knowing that this is what happens. Hmm. So my point is that I have been very skeptical of that feeling. I want for myself, like if I feel that or somebody feels that towards me, I just think, okay, you're in Bali, you're on vacation or you're here for a couple months. Once you live here, 
you get used to that and you realize like, yes, this is a, an incredible place that does, like you said, open people up and mm-hmm. increases that, that vibration in our hearts. But it's also a place where people live and we just, it's, you've got everyday life and all the things that come along with that and yep. the practical side of it. So this gets to the other point I wanted to make about the, what, what you think love is, what any of us think love is. Because there, we talked about, or you said that you don't want to, we don't have to make it completely spiritual. Because mm. you could, when you talk about romantic love or any love, but we're talking about romantic love, you can talk about the biology. You can talk about the spiritual element. You can talk about the, the psychological element. And something that I kind of struggle with, I think, is, is deciding or determining or understanding what proportion of each of those is influencing my behavior when it comes to love. Mm. For instance, I could say, well, I feel love towards this person because I'm driven to procreate, right? That's just pure biological element of it. Saying like, maybe, maybe there's no spiritual element to it. I'm not saying this is the case, but you could, one could make the argument like a very scientific minded person could say, there's no spiritual element to it. It's pure biology, biology. It's pure mechanics. You're driven to procreate. It floods your body with all these, these hormones and mm-hmm. it, it confuses you. It basically tricks you into thinking that you need this person because your body wants to procreate and that's beneficial for, for the species and for the family unit. So I'm curious about your thoughts on this because it's some, I struggle with it. I really do. And I, because since you know a little bit about my last serious relationship mm-hmm. with, yeah. <laughs> a lady. A lady. <laughs> I mean, that definitely fucked me up is what I'm saying. So now it I'm was, like. It was a toxic ending. Is that right? Is that safe to say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was. You can yeah. talk about it if you want to talk about it on here. Yeah, we can, can talk, talk about, about it. it. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, it was not healthy. And I did a lot of things. Was it an, was it an unhealthy relationship though? Or was it an unhealthy break? Not always. With hindsight, actually, was the relationship. Yeah, I mean, it was built on yeah. rocky foundations. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I was pretty fucked up. Yeah, and we did not, we did not bring out the best in each other. But yeah. Be- because of that, I, I think I, I've gone really far down this, like, biology. <laughs> I'm like it's it's biology it's fine and now if I feel that I just think okay it'll pass this is just this is hmm. this is just the the body this is the biological process is doing their thing let it pass and that makes me sad because I also very much believe there's a spiritual element to love of course there is of absolutely course. there is absolutely there, it's union isn't it I don't know well again a, a fine can of worms gratitude for your presentation of the aforementioned (laughs) love is is a different flavor for everyone i think and i think and that's primarily down to who we are from where we came and where we are right now Mm -hmm. if you'd have said you'd have asked martin version 1.0 in his early 30s what love was he didn't really have a clue Although he'd already been married and divorced. What do you think he would say if you asked Martin 1.0 that question? I, I, think think? He'd have a, I think he'd have a much more basic idea of it based on what he thought it should be. So what, so what did you think it should be at 30 years old? Well, I, I, I think I thought it was about, uh, about stability, finding the right person, um, having stability, settling down with that person absolutely appreciating the fact that yeah you may well be completely different arguments are totally normal um falling out is normal being unpleasant to one another is normal Mm. um being dishonest with one another is perfectly Uh, acceptable and why is that because there's just certain things that you can't be open about that's what martin version 1.0 used to feel exactly so so martin version 1.0 kept a lot of secrets and i dare say his partners did too um now if you ask me and i i mean just for the record podcasting 
listeners here. Mm-hmm. I am no expert on romantic love. I've got two ex-wives. Um, two ex-wives? Two ex-wives. Oh, wow. I thought it was only one. Both of which I mistreated in one way or another. Don't get me wrong, it was a co-creation. It was co-responsibility. Um, I'm ashamed to say that I was a sex addict, so which I've already discussed on the podcast. I, I, I slept with hundreds of women. And I was constantly seeking intimacy mm. through sex. Yeah. So this plays to your biology conversation as well, I guess, a little bit. So my perspective of what love was was totally and utterly warped. Actually, through a great deal of therapy and, and a lot of work since, I've realized that all of these women I was sleeping with, there was... Um, it was a process of, it sounds awful, and I suppose in a way it was. It was almost, it was a game. It was, a pl- it was playing a game. It was like fishing. We spoke about fishing earlier on. It was playing a game. It was casting the, the line out there and seeing who I could attract. And then as soon as I had a bite, there was a game between us. Uh, and then ultimately I'd win that woman over. We would do whatever we were doing. It was either, you know sex for one night or it was maybe sex a few times or maybe it was a a micro relationship but the point is when I as soon as I'd caught the fish and I hastened to add all of my divine goddess queens listening to this show that's not my perspective I don't see this this is not how I feel about this stuff anymore I'm just talking about it's definitely not you're so respectful and I appreciate that you actually Pull me back from like, <laughs> being my worst. Self. Well, no, I mean the thing is, I, I think it's important to to use the language that that I know people use now. Yeah. In yeah. the context of this stuff, even though it's not me anymore, because it's uh, I think it just highlights the issue, which incidentally, fundamentally, I think is a psychological issue. But we can come on to that. So. So you're saying so then to keep going with the the fishing. Well, one side, one side, won my prize. Yeah. I'd very quickly become disinterested yeah, yeah, yeah. on any level or another, right? And so, and, and it was only a matter of time before that thing was going to dissipate. Now, there were many women in that whole madness who were doing exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we were, I wasn't a sexual predator. This was a, this was a two-way thing. But there were also, there were also lots of women who, who developed a, a love or a strong feelings towards me and I wasn't interested um, and I now know I primarily wasn't I primarily wasn't interested because I didn't actually know what love was my perspective of it was warped twisted and so I tried it with various relationships I did have several serious relationships as well but uh, but they never quite worked and and we were often I was attracting a certain type of woman and she was attracting a certain type of man Martin version 1.0, bad boy, naughty, cheeky, bit of money, some nice shiny stuff. Uh, we had, you know, we did nice fun stuff, and and actually quite a few, quite a few women tried to change me. Mm, yeah, which yeah, was an yeah. interesting thing. Um, and all the while, I was trying to, I think, failing, but trying to change myself because I was trying to fit this, you know, not not geometric shaped Martin into a into a, a round hole if that makes sense it's not quite a square peg because the corners are all smashed up you can follow <laughs> me on that metaphor trying to fit a square peg in a round hole and uh, because I thought that that was what it should be I, I, want, I want a round hole and here's the other thing by the way my mum and dad were my mum and dad didn't have a, a healthy relationship you know my mum as I've talked about on uh, several episodes was an alcoholic bless her so that I had that in the background and this by the way this is not me talking about me on the podcast this is hopefully you can follow that this is about our pathology it's about our psychological mm-hmm. pathology so what is love to everyone well depends on your background because when you've got two parents who aren't having a loving healthy relationship and there's a weird drama going on over there that you witness day in day out as a small child that's that's what you learn about love that woman is your female role model. That man is your male role model. And they're mm. teaching you what union looks like. <laughs> Which, oh, bearing God. in mind the, the very small painting I just, I just did 
for you it might give you an idea. I didn't get the I didn't get the best idea of, of what a healthy relationship was. And then I took that with my closed heart, which was actually locked inside a, a chest, inside a citadel, inside several uh, castle-like buildings. Did they have moats around There was them? a moat alligators. with sharks, oh, sharks and alligators wow. with flick knives. <laughs> and lasers on their head. Lasers, <laughs> yeah. No, turtles with lasers. So Some powers reference. Yeah, yeah, lasers. <laughs> You think about uh, think about the Lord of the Rings castles. You know they're they're built so you're really not getting in them. And so that was, personally speaking, that was my heart. That was my closed heart. That's what a closed heart looks like, by the way. I, yeah, keep going. But it's something interesting that I want to keep going. Okay, but cool. then, well, I, so I, I'm I'm rounding back to ultimately. I didn't know what love was, and I didn't love myself. And I, I, I know it's a. I, some I've seen people criticise this and call it a cliche, and I've still not under, I've still not seen a legitimate argument as to why anybody would have a problem with this expression. But if you can't live your love yourself, then how can you love anybody else? Moreover, if you can't love yourself, why would you expect anybody else to love you? Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've seen that knocked down a couple of times, but I've, as I say, I've not seen a, a legitimate argument as to why. What? So what is, what is the argument you hear, though? Um, if you can't love yourself, you know, we're, all, we're always trying to love ourselves. Okay, that's your truth. Totally appreciate it. What I'm here to say is I spent 44 years not knowing what it was to love myself or other people. Not the truest sense of love. Now I do. Actually, my realization was that it's not about a relationship. It's, well, it is. It's about a relationship with yourself. And uh, the happier you are inside yourself, this also plays to becoming more attractive, I think, as well, because that's a radiance that people sense. Um, the more likely you are to attract that, the, the similar energy you're looking for, in my opinion. Now... I can only say that speaking from personal opinion, as everybody knows who listens to the podcast, I wasn't open up, opened up to love. That is to say I was, I found myself, if we're going to use the expression here, and I was vibrating super high, yeah. but I wasn't looking for a partner. And then I went for a coconut with this English woman called Julia Malcolmson. And I fell in love over a coconut with Yogi Bear. Didn't plan it, wasn't even looking for it. And within 48 hours, we lived together and, and we've been together nearly three years. And, the, and I've never, ever had a relationship like this, nor will I ever have a relationship like this again. I'm completely in love with Jules. Uh, but in a healthy way. Yeah, and that's y you are you and Jules are one of the few couples I know in Uluwatu. I have other friends actually, uh, Mac and Lisa. Lisa's birthday yesterday. Shout out to them. They've been together for about three years. Shout out. Yeah, but you, them, I can think of like one other, Rushi and Carl Curtis. Mm -hmm. I call him Carl. Uh, but it's Why like Carl? I don't know. <laughs> Long story. Carl is not uh, one of his names though. No, no. I mean, it is now. But I like I, Curtis. I like Rishi. Yeah, yeah. No, they're they're great people. But it's like the three the three couples. And what's interesting is that there aren't many couples here, but the three that I know, and I'm really I'm thinking I only know three <laughs> that are like close friends, right? Very stable. They, it's it, it almost seems like if you're going to have a relationship in Bali, like it better be stable. It better like you better like you said love yourself. Well, for well before we get too deep into that. That, yeah, everything you just said, completely on board. I definitely recognize that with you and Jules. There is this, I mean, stability, for sure. There's a stability, there's a comfort, there's an ease, there's a, a genuine appreciation for one another. You know that I met, well, of course you know this, but for the audience, maybe they don't know this. I met you through Jules mm -hmm. and I remember the first time I met Jules she was with she's friends with Marta my friend we were at the sound healing thing at the yoga barn and like right after I met Jules she started talking about her partner and that was my first introduction to Martin was <laughs> Jules talking about her partner I was like who is this dude 
I wonder what kind Hello. of I wonder what kind of <laughs> guy this this chick dates. <laughs> well, that's funny. It's funny you should say that because I, I think a lot of people think that, and then when they meet me, they go, "You are not what I expected." <laughs> Well, yeah, you're you're not what I expected. No, but that's one of the <clears throat> beautiful things about the relationship that Jules and I have. I think, you know, uh, I used to be in relationships with people with whom I fought a lot of, uh, not physically, I hasten to add, um, but there was a lot of aggression and a lot of unpleasant language and shouting and yada yada on both sides. And I. I don't know. I was thinking about this the other day, and I don't know why. I wondered whether or not, you know, because people say, "Well, that's normal. That's perfectly normal." And and I, and I, actually, if you think about most of the TV shows and movies that we watch, well, yeah, I mean, it has been normalised by culture. But then, interestingly, and you'll know this as a screenwriter, you are encouraged to to introduce conflict in every scene to keep the audience engaged. But actually, I do wonder how much of, of that has been subliminal programming for, for, for us who've grown up watching TV shows and movies and just constantly seeing this, this conflict. Well, it's normal, isn't it? It happens everywhere. Hmm. Anyway, another mind digression. No, that's, but, that's interesting, though. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's just an observation I had recently, and I thought, actually, yeah, I suppose you, you, could, be, you, you could be forgiven for thinking it's normal. You know, now if I watch a movie that's just all conflict, all shouting, all swearing at, at each other, I, I turn it off. I actually can't watch it. I'm just like, oh, man, this is it's putting a dent in me. Um, this is not how we, it's not how we communicate. Um, but I appreciate how a few years back, the environment I was from and the people I, I knew, and I'm not saying this is nothing to do with those people in particular. I think this is just you know, life in certain places. It is normalized. Conflict is normalized in relationships. But the point is, Jules and I are yin and yang, very much so. She's this super calm, very super so. zen, <laughs> uh, super caring, loving yogi bear. And I'm, I don't know, what am I? A ball of energy, I suppose, is, is, is probably a polite way of putting it. How did I describe you early on when we met? I, can't, I, can't I think it was one of the first podcasts we did. Uh, first one on How to Die Happy. I think I said like a Tasmanian devil or something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, and, that, and I think that's still probably a, it's a good, it's a good uh, analogy. Although I don't, yeah, although then I'm, I'm probably, because I was always a Tasmanian devil, I think. But, but I mean more in the energy, not yeah. not that you're actually satanic. No. <laughs> great, just the, great just the energy. Well, and, and that is my energy. And, and, and I, I don't, I think it's an interesting thing when you go through any sort of transformation, which we all do and can any day of the week, because we're all subject to, to the universal law of impermanence. Um, actually, throughout my entire transformation of the last few years, that's one thing that's not... Um, it's not disappeared. My energy, my enthusiasm, my my passion. If anything, actually, it's it's amplified. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I have this insane gratitude for life. You know, you know this when you're fa- when you're two minutes from or two seconds from suicide. We've been there, right? You're about to end it all, and then you fast forward to a different emotional state and a different location in Bali in, in, in our instance, then you do have a newfound sense of gratitude. When you're, when you're right at rock bottom and you manage to drag your ass out of that in some way or you're helped out of that, then you can't help but have more gratitude, which incidentally also comes from the heart. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, man. Just letting all that soak in pass over me pass through me (laughs) i was just thinking as you were talking that when i observe you and jules that you she has this way of kind of helping you channel that energy i feel like like she doesn't dampen it no even though maybe sometimes it would be beneficial for the rest of us yes (laughs) i'm kidding no you're right you're right you're right no but she has this wonderful way of helping you i think in the subtle sort of way channel that yeah and and direct it she does and it's like very subtle jules is so subtle but so powerful mm. and i appreciate that about watching the two of you because mm. i feel like you 
respect her boundaries and that not yep. just her boundaries between the two of you, but the boundaries she seems to put up for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying this like you're a child or something. No, and she's no, your mom, I, but I don't mean it like that. No, but everything you're saying is absolutely spot on. And, and I, I, but I think we all need that. It doesn't matter what we age do. we are. We yeah. all need that from our partners. But, but I think it's the difference is when it's done not in an attempt to control not in an attempt to manipulate, but it's almost to push a few buttons to get the best out of yes, your partner. Yeah, I think exactly. that's maybe the way to put it. Exactly. You know, Jules has this incredible way of just tweaking this and mm-hmm. turn that on with yep. me, and then uh, da da, I'm optimized again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and vice versa, you know, I, I do that for Jules definitely uh, because you know one of us is up, one of us is down, the other way around. So, mm-hmm. but I, I think. You know, th- this opens up a whole other conversation about relationships, uh, relationship dynamics and what's healthy and what's unhealthy. We were having a conversation the other day, Jules and I. Um, she's going to go away for five weeks for Christmas. Really? Where's she going? She's going back to the UK. Oh, wow. You're not I, going? I'm not going. So she's going to go and hang with the fam. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she has, as always... 5,000% of my support for such a thing. She's really missing her family, especially mm-hmm. a little nephew. She wants to spend some time with him because she's already missed a, f- a couple of his years, his younger years. I have no desire to go back to England. <laughs> so I'm staying here. And I'll be best for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I, and also, do you know what? I actually want to have a Christmas day on my own. Just, uh, I actually enjoy Christmas day on my own. It's a, it's a good opportunity to play King's College choir carols, full blast all day with nobody criticizing it. I can do some roast potatoes. I might barbecue a fish this time. The dogs are going to enjoy it. You know, we'll watch some movies, yada, yada. I'm going to come over and bug you. No, you are not. <laughs> no, no fucking with my Christmas. Martin. <laughs> Martin. Merry Christmas. There'll be, a cute, there'll be a line of people outside the house. Hey, we heard all about what you had planned for Christmas Day. I know, it sounds awesome. <laughs> we brought some gonna, fish. you going to do barbecue. that by yourself for it. <laughs> Point being... I didn't even think about this for a moment, but Jules said, you know, it's, uh, I, I just want to let you know that it's, it's really cool how you support me when I want to go off and do this sort of thing. You're going away for five weeks. And I said, well, what else am I supposed to do? You know, that's, that's my job. Yeah, babe, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm super cool. <laughs> but, but actually, as you pointed out, a lot of partners would have a real issue for with sure. the, their other half yeah. going off to another country for five weeks. And that's interesting because that then, obviously there'll be, there'll be lots of reasons for that, but ultimately they're going to boil down to only a couple of things, aren't they? Insecurity, mistrust, sense of loneliness, um, sense that you can't live without that other person, mm-hmm. which is codependency. Mm-hmm. So... I realize these are all very normal neuroses and I'm not suggesting that everyone needs to, you know, should be Zen overnight, but, but I would, I would wager that they are fundamental issues that aren't healthy mm-hmm. and they're actually more about the partner that's staying than the partner that's going. Yeah. Indeed. Well, again, that is a sweeping generalization. Perhaps you've got a reason to mistrust that partner. Perhaps they did cheat on somebody a year ago or whatever, but then you decided to stay with them. So. You know, you've got co-responsibility for whatever happens now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think the fundamental point is, and this comes back to the whole beginning of the question, right? I love it how that happens. So good. If you are feeling those insecurities, that neurosis, whatever it is, you're, and you don't trust your partner to go away for a few weeks, then are you aware of it? If you are aware of it, do you want to actually... Do you think that's healthy? Do you want to address it? And then do you want to do some work? Because ultimately, it's a, that's about loving yourself. It's not about your relationship with that person. Yeah, 100%. I think. I mean, as I said, I, caveat, I'm no expert. I, th- I think you're right. I think you're spot on. I Okay, a lot, a lot to unpack here. <laughs> I want to get back to something you said, and this is kind of related to what you just said. So a little plug for the What's What podcast. I should tell people that, that Greener Us is no longer Greener Us. It doesn't even exist. It is just What's What now. Mm-hmm. 
I say that because I'm going to talk about Alan Watts now. And if you like nice. Alan Watts, if you like Krishnamurti, Aldous Huxley, Ram Dass, Timothy Leary, mm. we talk about that on What's What. So And What's What is Chris's podcast. Yes, yeah, yeah. I should Just probably say for that. those of you that don't know what the fuck he's talking <laughs> yeah. about right now. Like, what? What's what? Chris what? talking what's about? What? What's what? what? Yeah. And what's it's a great what? podcast, by the way. Thank you. So Alan Watts talks about how in the, the Chinese philosophy is that existence, the universe, is, is a great drama. He talks about the difference between the Western religious philosophy, generally speaking, Judeo-Christian, where there's, a, there's kind of a controller that's God and it's more mechanical, you know, it's kind of hierarchical. Hierarchical? Hierarchical. Hierarchical. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I think about that sometimes because if that, if there is something to that, to the existence being a drama, then maybe what we're, de- what you're describing here with relationships between a man and a woman, mm. maybe that is uh, an expression of that great drama played out at just an individual level. And yeah. maybe that there is, there is something to that conflict, something to that drama, because what, what else would we be doing here if everything was hunky dory? And everything was like, say, I mean, to use the example you just laid out, you're in a relationship three years, your partner goes off for five weeks, you're totally cool with it. It's like, all right, cool. End of story, right? I mean, every great story has to have drama. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a short story. Otherwise, it's a short story. So if existence and the universe really is a great drama, like the Chinese believe, it's it's a dance, it's music, it's just, it's just flowing it's this rhythm pop, 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 on and off on and off on and off on and off continuously then what happens when we do reach that place where we're just like everything's cool i don't care if my partner goes away for five weeks what a, what a beautiful question i we would all i think disappear from planet earth and we'd rise from third density to, to fourth density that's the short answer or fifth oh. density um <clears throat> So the dr- great drama you refer to is, is called samsara. That's that's what the yeah, Hindus, the, Hindu belief, the, the, yeah. the Buddhists believe. Right, right. That we that we live in a, um, a chaotic cycle of suffering and rebirth, life suffering, death, rebirth, life suffering, death, rebirth. That's samsara. Fucking samsara. We are samsaric citizens, you and I. <laughs> but samsara isn't all there is it is it's the plane it's the construct i think is the better way to put this yeah yeah because if see it, it might feel chaotic but it isn't actually it's, it's by design and it's it's a playground so mm. you but obviously we're moving a little bit off off topic from romantic love here because now we must talk about reincarnation for a moment the the premise behind samsara is that uh and I, this is why i call this place earth school i believe in reincarnation folks me too hang, hang on let me re- rephrase that i know there is reincarnation there's a difference between believing something intellectually knowing it and literally knowing it and i literally know it and that's probably for another conversation <laughs> Maybe we should talk about reincarnation at some point. But the, but the point is that, that then samsara exists for us to uh, recycle into, to pop back into. And the idea is, of course, that you forget your past lives so then you can relive more drama, more adventures, more heroes' journeys. Yeah, That's the yeah. point, right? Yeah. Um, and the premise is actually that the learning, this is where it gets a bit more complex. We're all expressions of a of a, a larger consciousness, the one. We're individual expressions of that one, and we're actually uploading all of these this, this data back to the one. Why? Well, because the one one day, being the one that could do anything, said, "What am I?" And that's how this whole thing began. But that's a whole other conversation. That is. It, it's interesting though, because then okay. I, I'm completely on board with everything you said. I think it's very well put. So where does romantic love fit into that? Because you great could, question. You could say that the the attraction, the love, 
the dynamic between a man and a woman mm -hmm. is in some ways the ultimate expression of that at, at this physical level. Of that frequency. Of that frequency. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. It will. Sorry. No, no, you go for it. Well, okay, so what's love to me now? I suppose. What's, what's love to Martin version 2.0? It's love. <laughs> Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> Don't hurt me no more. Uh, ding, such a great ding, song. Ding, 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 ding. Guys, I don't know what age I was when I was in Toff's nightclub in New York dancing to that, but I remember, I, what, oh I, what I can tell you about that was it was a, it was one pence to get into the nightclub before nine o'clock, and it was one pound per pint up to That's about 11 super cheap, right? One pence is like a penny? Yeah, exactly. So like a cent, exactly. So you, so you could go to Toff's nightclub on a Thursday night with... 12 pounds get absolutely shit face drunk and buy a kebab at the end of the night and dance nice. to what is love and, and, that's I mean, awesome. <laughs> and of course that's another there's another facet of love isn't it romantic love going to a nightclub and sort of this bizarre tribal arrangement where all the men stand around looking yeah, at the women yeah. and the women are dancing and you know there's <clears> anyway meat <throat> market we can certainly talk about that though we should talk about that in a moment yeah. so, but just yeah, back going. to the what is love I I think it's a frequency. Mm. It's a uh, it's it's a vibration, and um, and that frequency is oneness. Mm. It's union. It's harmony. Love that. I love it. And I think that's the the mission. If you could suspend any belief about afterlife, on you know where we're from and yada yada for a moment, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I know that we've come from place of unity consciousness where everything is love and I've been there I've actually been back there uh, on a couple of plant medicine journeys and I can't the wordsmith that I am I can't possibly quantify the feeling that it that you have when you're in this place yeah well words words can't describe it words no limits when it comes to those no things. I mean you need a symphony to describe it mm. and that's an energy where everything is connected, interconnected. What are we doing here in a realm of separation? Well, I believe we are here to learn to love. I think I've talked to you about this before on the podcast where I had this experience with a meditation when in my 20s and I met my higher self, what's one of them? And my higher self, I asked my higher self a question and my higher self, I said, why am I here? And my higher self said, you're here to learn to love. And I went, all right, cool, thanks, dude. And then I came out of this meditation and went, what the fuck was that? And then spent, you know, thick end of 20 years as a high functioning addict of, on some degree uh, or other. And then it was only in the jungle in Bali when I was invited to do a meditation to, to turn love on myself that suddenly, boom, I, I got it. I realized, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, that's the mission, isn't it? So if we come from unity consciousness where everything is love, then surely the toughest mission we could give ourselves is to live in this place, planet Earth, the realm of duality, where there isn't just love, there's hate, where there isn't as light, light, there's light and dark. So if we can learn unity in a place that, that with a constructural design that doesn't necessarily support unity, then we are on an incredible hero's journey towards emotional, spiritual, whatever word you want to use, advancement. So that's what love is to me. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Wow. Okay. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you say all these things. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> what you got? I guess we'll just walk away now. I can't really have anything else to that. No. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Yep. 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 So, but does it make, did that, as a matter of interest, does that resonate? Because obviously yeah, you and I have very yeah, different one, life experiences, right? Oh, yeah, so. 100%. It really does. And as usual, thank you for your beautiful illustration and your insight. So this kind of gets back to our last, was it your last episode too for How to Die Happy? Mm, yeah, or the, one or, the, or the one before. Or the, yeah. So one, the suffering, about suffering. Yeah. So because yeah, oh, incidentally, yeah, we've been terrible at putting out podcasts. That's okay. You've been busy writing the book. Can yeah. we talk about the book? We can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
How did that happy books come yeah. out soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, have that finished in the next. I'll finish writing it in the next four weeks, and I need to get it in front of an editor. But nice. that's just taking up all my time at the moment. So yeah, that's okay. It's that's my right. my number one creation. It's awesome. Mm. Stoked for that. Talk about a lot of this in the book, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. How did that happen? Mm. Anyway, available in paperback. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hardback too. Let's see. Hopefully, I'm going to do an audio version as well. I thought. Are I, you? Are you going to narrate? Yeah. Nice. I, 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 Hell I, yeah. Just uh, we are really sidetracking now. But I, I, whenever I listen to a book that's been narrated by the author, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm really getting it. The way yeah, they intended yeah. it to be received. Absolutely. Do you know? Yeah. Like, no, I think that's so it's cool. The way they and, and sometimes, more's the pity. I'm not dissing anybody who does voiceover work for audiobooks, by the way. Jolly well done. Um, but there are some some audiobooks because I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and sadly they're sort of tarnished by the by the narrator. Yeah, I could see that. My my experience of the of, the, of receiving that information is a little bit like, oh, God. yeah, yeah. This is like a mindfulness my mindfulness exercise, but your voice and your intonation is sort of Fucking irritating up. me a little bit. Yeah, I could see that. Well, but if you do need a voice for your American English speaking audience, because you know that a lot of people won't be able to understand. <laughs> Saying, you should <laughs> hire me to do that <laughs> if you want. <laughs> no, I, I'm joking. I think you're absolutely right, and I think you'll do a phenomenal job. I, I've always Thank liked you. your voice. Very That's, kind. I remember when we first met here at Cella. We met here at Cella. Mm. Oh, yeah. Shout yeah. out. Shout yeah. out. We are at Cella, by the way. Thanks to yeah. Marcella, um, who, if you hadn't worked it out, owns Cella, yeah. the incredible restaurant. Uh, in uh, Bingen is it technically Bingen isn't yeah it? we're in Bingen for sure absolutely so, and Diego where, too that's where we're recording and filming Diego's over in Chile so hey Diego oh Diego's nice oh that's time. wonder I, I sent him a text saying happy birthday yeah he's gone to see his fam in yeah. Chile but, nice. uh, so we're recording from uh, Chile this morning now yeah shout, yeah, shout out to them um, okay so we're coming back what is love coming back <laughs> so again connecting to the last episode about suffering Everything that you were saying before, that, that beautiful, uh, whatever, not a story, but it was kind of a story, it's a, a universal story. Mm-hmm. The whole, everything is love. This is what I want to talk about. Yep. Okay. And I think we talked a little bit about this in the Suffering Podcast. I can't remember, but I think. So if you, if you equate in you, all any, anybody, not just you specifically, if we equate love with creation... Yep. And a, this is, again, kind of getting back to more uh, understanding of love in a biological sense or yep. when we're talking about physics. and Well, it also has a metaphysical uh, slant to it as well, doesn't it? It, it does. As yeah, yeah. So below in that regard. Right. Because, you, because love is – creation is, is arguably the, the best, the most profound example of love. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it, yes. So if that's the case – which I think we can agree it is. Mm-hmm. That love is creation. Creation is love. That 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 driving force that, that pushes all of life here and maybe life elsewhere mm-hmm. is what we describe as love. That we do know that love and creation. Well, let's talk about creation since we've already established the connection between creation and love. Creation needs not only needs. Creation is the other side of the coin from destruction. Uh huh. So this is this is what I want to talk about, and I'm in no way trying to like bait me, poke holes, or bait you. I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm just. I'm very curious about this. And you you don't do this, but I hear some people say this. They're like, "Well, everything is love, right? Everything is love, or everything needs to be love." I think a lot of people that are on the spiritual path, so to speak, that I've come across here in Bali. The Ubudian type. Sorry, I'm not trying to be derogatory. You know, you know how I am. I'm sorry, I can't help it. I can't help it. We all judge, Chris. I know. I'm sorry. Not, not we all to. judge, Chris. Yeah, we, we all, all judge, <laughs> comma, Chris. We all judge Chris because Chris is an asshole with a comma, <laughs> and he's talking shit about the Ubudians. See the important of punctuation. Yeah, I'm like looking around, make sure there aren't any. Well, there probably are. Yeah, I know there probably are. But okay, let's, so the problem I have with that. 
or I think the challenge, I want to say a problem and not what you're saying. I think the way you say it is so perfect. And I just, I wish I had you there like all the time, just recording so I could just play it. <laughs> be like this is just, Martin in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. You should, we should do that. That would actually be super good. Just give you, you some little, uh, yeah, yeah. sound bites. Yeah. Cause it's so oh, Martin's good. got something yeah, on yeah. that. Martin's got something for that. Brilliant. I am uh, honored. Yeah. No, I, 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 I absolutely mean it. I'm not just flattering you because I'm like taking a, a shot at the love is everything, everything is love uh-huh. thing. Because I see what you're saying. Because the way that you're saying it is that there is a there is a, a place, so to speak, maybe a metaphysical place, mm-hmm. a spiritual place, a different realm where everything is love. But in in this existence, in this plane, in this everything realm, is not love. Everything is not love. So I guess what I'm getting at is that when you what do you think when you hear people say this because again another thing i really appreciate about you is that you do exist in that that world you know that kind of quote unquote spiritual world but you're so grounded i can have a normal conversation with you you're you're down to earth in a way that i think is very rare for people that are so deep in that so what do you hear when you hear people say that you just just take like and I'm not trying to judge here I'm just for the sake no, of no, conversation no no I appreciate it well I suppose well, if somebody said to me what uh, everything is love I'd, I'd, I'd need them to I would say in what way because I'd need them to explain their point I think um, I as as I've expressed on many a podcast episode with you as well the, the thing I'm trying to work on the most now is judgment <clears throat> and uh, I suspect I'll be doing it for the rest of my life because I'm human and as discussed we, we live in a realm of duality where judgment is, 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 is just part of the construct but if someone were to say something like that I suppose I'd want to know what they meant because to say everything is love is a, it sounds nice it's a sound bite but it, what's, what supports that point because everything isn't love and, and playing back to your point we live in samsara, uh, the, the cycle of life, death, suffering, and rebirth. So suffering, as we discussed in that last podcast, is, is part of the construct. And actually, and as we also discussed, so incidentally, if you've not listened to this episode about suffering, you might want to skip a couple of episodes back, or maybe the last one, I can't remember which one it was. But the point is, if we accept that suffering is part of the game, Dukkha, they call it, the Buddhists. Suffering is Dukkha. Yeah, yeah. And we also also accept that impermanence is part of the game, which is a Nietzsche. A Nietzsche. We can accept these two things as part of the construct in which we live. Now, if we can accept acceptance, if we can accept anything, then we can stop pissing and moaning about it. Um, maybe that was a bit judgmental, <laughs> but my point is that actually, then we can just we can surrender to it, we can accept it as part of daily life, and through doing that, well, here's the thing: when I accept something that's causing me suffering, who am I loving? It as a test. <laughs> <laughs> is it yourself? It is myself. Oh, nice. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. because if I'm, if I'm constantly boom, 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 pushing, banging my head against that wall, pushing my, pushing my way against the flow, then I'm, the only person I'm hurting is me. So actually by accepting and by moving with the flow and by moving um, beyond whatever that obstacle is or through that obstacle, I, I ought to say, remember we had the conversation, it's not about getting over something you've got to go through it the obstacle is the way as the stoics would say ryan holiday shout out great book then actually i'm loving myself and there is an alchemy to this i must i must admit there is a, there is a, a an alchemy in this place this thing called earth and i can't quite explain it to you but when you do start to do that thing accept forgive I receive and understand the concept of impermanence and flow anyway and give yourself love and give other people love in spite of the fact that we're in this realm of suffering where Whoa, conflict exists, you know, it's normal for us all to shout at each other. Okay, respect that truth. But there is another truth where you don't have to do that. Then there's an alchemy that happens and suddenly life, I don't know, can't explain it. Life gets 
a little bit easier. Things look a little bit lighter. Things sound a little bit more beautiful. And in answer to your original question, way, way, way back, imagine if we were all, we all had, we all had this, uh, this Zen perspective where we weren't uh, conflicting and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been there, been to that place, and ultimately it's not here. So I think the idea is, and, and you, obviously this is my truth, so people either buy into this or not, and it doesn't matter if they don't. But my truth is that we come here f- to have the tough lessons. And there are probably entities elsewhere uh, amongst this universe, or in the multiverse, if you like, that go kudos to anybody that puts themselves through a, a tour at Earth School. Fuck! Those fuckers are crazy. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fucking nuts. Like the Navy SEALs. Yeah, of, uh, no, ten times. Interdimensional. Time. Interdimensional <laughs> Navy SEALs, right? So, actually, there's, a, there's an argument to say, um, and, and you know what, forget that perspective for a moment. Kudos to anybody who, who is here, who is living on this planet, especially in this bloody time, right? There's some madness going on in the world. So, serious madness. Take a moment. gratitude to yourselves for still showing up and in this madness right now extra gratitude to yourselves if you are able to generate some love for yourself and for anybody else because these these are testing times yeah but by design in my opinion so the point being um there is there will be no utopia on earth not the way people perceive it to be because if there were a utopia like that we'd all disappear and go off and, and learn a new thing because there'd be nothing to learn here yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah it, it does. It makes complete sense. And I think you're getting to exactly what I was what I was trying to get to, but as usual, my words fall short. And Martin, You do yourself a disservice, Christopher. And Mar- Martin picks him up and is like, here we go, Christopher. Here we I go. just spat coconut water everywhere. Oh, nice. That's but, cool. So now, That's but here's, cool. If, if I may um, for a moment. Yes, you may. <laughs> we, but, but, you know, when you're saying things like that, be mindful of any negative self-talk as well, because we're, cause we, I know we do, you're doing it from for a joke, but I guess it's yeah, yeah. probably, you, you provided a great example for the conversation for the audience. Any ne- negative self-talk is, is a creation of internal conflict. Oh, I got plenty of that. Right? So, <laughs> and, it, and that's not loving ourselves. Yeah, but I also kind of like the self-deprecating humor. Yeah, oh, no, I do. I find it fun. I, I love self-deprecating humor, and, and, I'm, and I'm the first one to... And I, and I also think it's, uh, it's a wonderful expression of humility as well, if done, if done right. Yeah, and also I need to keep myself in check. But I hear you, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I can be pretty arrogant. So but you're also a master of, wordsmith and incredibly oh, intelligent and articulate. So I think, you know, this is, you know, I, I talk about self-love a lot. And, and I, when I do it, I think perhaps some people may or may not know what I'm talking about. But it's quite an important point to, to, to touch on in this, in this, in this episode. Because self-love isn't me standing in front of the mirror every morning, pouting, you know, checking out my abs. I don't have any abs, by the way. <laughs> 47 next week. It's all right. <laughs> next month. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. It's your birthday. You know, what I, you know what I mean? You know, I, I, and, and by the way, I'm not criticizing anybody who does that either. Um, that has abs? That has abs. <laughs> that does abs. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not criticizing anybody who, who takes, hi, who takes uh, that kind of um, observation of themselves into their sort of self-love routine, right? But all I'm suggesting is there's a fine line between healthy love of oneself and narcissistic love of oneself. And, um, and it's obviously it's perfectly fine to have abs and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and have access to, you know, your spiritual self, you know, your self loving self, whatever focused on abs too much there, but, um, <laughs> that's okay. Maybe really? I'll get some, um, you're pretty good to me. Yeah, well, I actually just started going to the gym again last week. So yeah, you look uh, good, man. yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm getting. I'm gonna get back to it because I, I, I realized through writing the book, there's a, there are three sections in the book called Zen and the Art of Earth Rover Maintenance, nice. and um, one section is on consumption. The second chapter is uh, movement, and the third is rest. And I realize, buddy, you're not taking your own advice. You know, you've actually, you've taken the foot off the gas on the earth rover maintenance front from a movement and exercise perspective. 
and hitting 47 as I will do soon, buddy. You know, there's more work to be done, more regular work to be done. Anyway, we digress. We do, but the self-love thing, yeah, so where were we? Well, we were, we were talking about self-love, and, and perhaps the next obvious place to go then is, is back to the point about having healthy love for oneself. At what point is it a sensible time then to allow, to open that up to other people? So you think, you know, you remember your, your lady you were talking about at the beginning of this episode. <clears throat> Suddenly someone's found themselves, I'm doing air quotes again, and then they're opened up. They're suddenly going, whoa, shit, you know, I'm, I've got this whole new vibe and I want to share that with people. And then, of course, you're potentially you are meeting these people on Tinder dates or something. Or, or I don't know. I don't know if we're talking about actual life. I don't examples. know what you're talking about. Well, <laughs> well let me, this, this is a question Get for it. you. Were I you, definitely know what you're talking so about. So were you talking about live exam, personal yeah, examples? Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, Yeah, right. for sure. So I suppose the, the next question then is, is are these folks perhaps throwing themselves out into the, into the world, for want of a better word, yeah. a little bit too early? Yeah, well, I mean, we can certainly talk about my personal experience with it because I, I think... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we, I've talked way too much. And actually, just FYI, everyone, Chris is like a... He's a, he's a, he's a prolific data. <laughs> <laughs> It's like absolutely prolific. <laughs> Talk about it like I'm a, a well-known writer or something. It's well, prolific. <laughs> well, you, one could one can make an expertise out of anything if one practices enough. Yeah, that's true. Have I mean, you done a thousand hours of dating? <laughs> I reckon so. Well, let me. <laughs> maybe dating isn't the right way to put it. I am. Uh oh. I spend a lot of th- time with. With women, yes, that is that is true. That's safe to. That's fair to say. That is a, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah, put me on the spot. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you looking for? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I hope no woman that I'm actually interested in ever hears this. <laughs> well, perhaps use this as a potential to uh, to put out the best Tinder profile <laughs> ever. I don't use Tinder that much, actually. Well, you really have to here in Bali. You know what I mean. I do yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Just like the, yeah, the, if, yeah. If, if anyone was looking to date Chris, you know, this, this, Good luck. what you're about to say could be like gold. So what am I looking for? Okay, this is a very good question. I've, I've thought about this recently because people have asked me this. Well, I should hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Potential partners as well. Like, yeah, well, yeah. you know what's interesting is that in some ways I've gotten exactly what I wanted being here. Mm-hmm. So spend some time with somebody, they leave in a couple of days or a couple of weeks, it's perfect, right? It's exactly what I wanted to have something that's non committal, a, a, a connection as deep as a connection can be for just a few days or a few weeks. And then they leave and I go back to my normal life. And I tell them, that, I tell some of the women that I've dated this, it's like, I have my close female friends. Like, I don't really need you <laughs> to fill that for me because my close female friends, like, that's where I get what I need as far as the... The, the, the feminine nutrients. Yeah, right. Energetic right, 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 right. nutrients. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you were to ask me the question, what am I looking for? I would say that I want, I want two things. One, I want whatever it is to be to be as natural as possible meaning that I don't want it to feel forced or engineered which is I want to get back to that point in a second because I think it's really important and then two I want it to be mutual in the sense that I want to like somebody as much as they like me and vice versa you know what I mean because there's nothing worse to me than having than somebody liking me more than I like them or me liking them more than they like me. I want that feeling. The word is balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but to the first point about it being engineered, so I was having a conversation with someone. She's very lovely. She she comes from a part of the world where they're more conservative and traditional when it comes to romantic relationships. And English is not her first language, so she may not have used this word in the, the way that I understood it, but she said that relationships in some way need to be engineered. Mm. And I thought about that, and my first reaction was like, "Oh, oh, I don't, I don't agree with that." You know how I am. I'm very. Was she German? 
No, she's Russian. Huh. Um, oh, okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's very, she's lovely. Lovely pragmatic. person. Yeah, very pragmatic. And But I thought about it, and it, like I said at first, well, like I was saying, you know how I am. I'm very, I'm kind of a maximalist when it comes to the the hippie perspective, so to speak. Just the flow, man. Natural, all natural. You know, I, I, I very much reject any kind of um, human manipulation because I distrust the human intellect. Mm-hmm. When people say engineered, there's immediate distrust in my mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think that's how she meant it, though. I think that what she was getting at was that it's one, I think it's kind of what I was getting at, which it's one thing to have the spark with somebody, you know, especially here in Bali, like we were talking about before, that you, your, your heart just kind of turns on here, and, and maybe that's not an accurate uh, idea of what's actually going on, that really it's, it's when the rubber meets the road, so to speak, and when the practical things come into play with a relationship that things actually do need to be engineered, so to speak. I use this word because that was the word she used. Maybe that's yep. not what she was going for. But I, I struggle with that because there is part of me that wants to believe that it's just it's purely uh, spiritual, metaphysical, magical, Connection. so to speak. Yeah. But at some point... If you are going to, to have a life together, you have to consider these practical things. And that's, so I guess getting back to you, you asking me what I want, I think I, at this point, I don't really want to think about that because maybe I'm just comfortable living in this transient yeah, way. Yeah. And just like, oh, just feel that magic for a little bit, knowing that it's going to go away. Because I have a deep, deep fear and trauma around the, <clears throat> the, the separation. That's always been very, very hard for me. This idea. Oh, he's open, he's, he's yeah, opened a can of worms there, serious, hasn't he? But it's an important can of worms. I he's, that was Diego. I was like, Diego, what are you doing back No, he's still it's in not, Chile. Okay, cool. So because of that, well, just sorry, and then I'll finish off this thought. Because I have that, that, that deep-seated trauma or fear of that separation, knowing the, the impermanence, I have full, to deal with that, I think I fully accepted it. And now when I meet somebody, I'm just, I'm already prepared for them to leave. And that's why this dynamic here in Bali, meeting people that are just here for a couple of weeks or a couple of months is so perfect for me right now. There are a few psychologists yeah, no, writing notes right oh, now. No, it's Chris. very unhealthy. It's super dysfunctional. <laughs> no, it's, this is not. Remember, there are going to be comments and Q&As <laughs> on this one. Yeah. I'm in no way advocating as a, this is a lifestyle, but I'm just, I'm being honest about what I'm doing. And, and because of that, I'm like, yeah, fully, just, just go be free. Do, go be free. Do, I, I don't know where to start. Do you... Is that Jules over there? It is. Jules is over there somewhere. Sorry, I'm, this is my way of kind of like She's just finished a yogi from, class. Uh, don't you worry. I'm, f- yeah, I'm yeah, You know, you're fully honed I in. I got a it. laser. Yeah, I know. I'm going to distract you. We're almost done, right? No. This, I'm kidding. There is no time <laughs> limit on a, on a How to Die Happy podcast. There... Okay, question one. Do, do all of the women with whom you date, for want of a better word, are, do, are you upfront about this? Is this something you, you set out? Do you set out your store straight away and say, FYI, I'm not in, I don't want to commit? Well, it's implied because they're leaving. You know, I'm always like, well, I live here. I'm not. So, no, to, to answer your question, no, I'm probably not as upfront as I could be, but that's the beauty of the. This but you're, at, you're, you're specifically going for transient. Um, I wouldn't women. say specific. Well, it, well, another thing I should say here is that this is not just me going specifically for that. That's just what, what seems to happen here. It's it's a two way thing, and, yeah. I, and I also I think uh, an important point to make is there's nothing predatorial <clears throat> about this. Uh, I, I think yeah, yeah. If you're here for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and you decide to switch your dating profile location to Bali, so you're on you, you're putting yourself out there. That's I mean that's cool. I've got I've got no perspective on that one way or the other. Yeah. But of course, if you are doing that, then you are opening yourself up to a to some, <laughs> people like me, <laughs> to, to Chris, <laughs> to the predator. I am joking. He's not a predator at all. Um, but I guess you are, of course, opening yourself up to transient interactions. Yeah. Which, which right. of course, will presumably therefore suit that woman as well. Otherwise, she wouldn't have made that, that conscious decision. Exactly. So there's no criticism in any of this. But I, w- I would say more, and I don't know who these people are anyway, so I can't, um, I, I'm not interested in having an opinion about them. But but I am interested in having an opinion about, um, or at least in, in 
or digging deeper into what you just said there. Cause I, Go for it. Because I wonder, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I wonder whether or not this, this, this speaks to that psychological pathology we were, we were rummaging around. Oh, earlier. it most certainly does. Because I, I, let me give you... It certainly does. Let me give you at least my perspective of, of me and how I used to behave. Because you know, the only way I can talk about this is, is you know, my truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ha, 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 how did I happy? <laughs> so, something you said, which I think is is worth digging into. Dig. Is that that's you? This is by design for you. So these transient relationships are by design because you are fully aware of the the impermanent nature of relationships, and you are perhaps scared of the emotional damage that impermanence could bring. Ergo, you might be therefore creating a safe sand pit for yourself, sandbox as they would call in, in the tech business, yeah. <clears throat> so that you can control your environment. Yep, yep, damn, yeah, <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, absolutely, 100%. But then that from a psychologist's perspective, and I'm not a psychologist, as everybody knows, but there's, there, there's some, there are some common traits here for, for people who have, who have experienced emotional injury at a young age. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in, in experiencing the emotional injury at a young age, go back to my castle with the moat and the lasers and the sharks and the turtles with the flick knives. Uh, <laughs> it's a great visual. Turtles with flick and the alligators yeah, that's with boxing good. gloves. Nice. Um, the, the, the point is that I had to do that for myself because I didn't have, or, I, or for whatever reason, I wasn't receiving the right sort of emotional... Yeah, makasi, bro, thanks. Makasi, vanya. I wasn't receiving the right sort of emotional support or, dare I say, education. Mentorship, that might be a better word. Yeah, yeah, guidance, mentorship. So yeah. then Martin aged three, four, five, six, seven, eight, had to make it up himself. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, into the teens, into the 20s, where, you know, we're all very sexually active and yada yada, into his 30s. There was still no one giving broken Martin any mentorship or advice about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had to create a construct for myself. And it was all about control. Why? Because I didn't want to be hurt either. I didn't want to have my heart broken. I didn't want to... I didn't want to put myself out there only to be ignored or to be pushed aside. But actually, all I wanted was a cuddle. Oh, Martin. <laughs> right? And I, don't that's, want, I don't want to cuddle. Well, I, I think you maybe do. <laughs> oh, no. I, well, I'm putting it out there. I, I don't know, Martin. Know, I, I'm not I'll, I'll just I'm joking. No, no, float, it's... I'm leave it floating in the ether, but I, I think absolutely, there's a... Absolutely, man. There is, absolutely. A, there is a perspective here, and it might be... This is your life and what you're doing for yourself, you know, and it's not for anybody else to judge or to tell you fundamentally. You know, I mean, I, I'm talk, we're talking about judgment. On, it's so hard for us not to judge, uh, and it's so hard for us not to want to just project some ego onto somebody else. You know, if we see people doing things that we don't agree with, well, why don't we agree with them? That's There's a whole fucking can of worms there I don't agree with it because of my life experience and my societal conditioning my familial conditioning that's why I don't agree with it so there's e egos in the way already yeah and, and we yeah. can't have it so, so I'm not for a moment saying I think you're doing this for this reason and therefore you should change and do that but since you wanted to have this conversation and since you know me so well and you you know that yeah, there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. It's yeah. hard. Not, I'm, I appreciate that you say it because you're right. Yeah. So, so I'm, I guess I'd invite you just to perhaps bear in mind that you wanted to have this conversation about romantic love and these yeah, transient totally. relationships. I'd, I'd invite a fresh perspective to, to review them and say, well, actually, what do you get out of them? You know? what? It's a good question. Is it fulfilling? It's a good question. I understand that you're probably having a lot of sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wrong, am I, Chris? 
Your matter of fact way of saying things. Just Thank you, Yogi. Yogi's Thanks, bringing Yogi. the coffees. Thank you, brother. Makasi, bro. Oh, no, I got the four leaf quiver and you got the fleur de lis. Fleur de lis. <laughs> fleur de lis. Um, so I understand that you're probably having a lot of sex, which, of course, uh, that, that's. I can, I can neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> he is ticking the biology box, right? Mm, mm-hmm. But also, one must. One cannot overlook the psychological component to that. Because yeah. it's not just biology. You know, I'm, not, I'm not crying, by the way. I just got some on my eye. I know, I know. <laughs> just wanted to make that clear. <laughs> For those of you not watching, it doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, but he's not crying. Um, yeah. But there is a psychological aspect to sex. Of course there is. And, and there is, uh, there's a, there's a transferal, transference of energy as well. And there I, is. And I think from a feminine perspective distinctly more so a woman yeah, is taking yeah. a man inside her mm-hmm. that that is a physical and energetic exchange that is uh, it's profound and it's often overlooked and again you know I've, I've been very clear and, and open about my past so there's no judgment here but I used to I used to treat sex like it was you know just a, eating yeah exactly like yeah. breathing yeah, and uh, and I would throw my sexual energy around um, everywhere, and I thought there was a distinct difference. Well, it's just sex. She she knows she's just having sex. I know I'm just having sex. It's fine. We're just having sex. No, it's not the way it works. And ultimately, while there are, and I'm not suggesting for a moment that um, that women need saving um, from men who do this, because obviously it's a two way decision. But I, I think I am suggesting that. That a lot of people, men and women, underestimate the energetic connection um, and the spiritual connection of, of what it is to, to create a, a sexual union like that. Sex, sexual union is it's a sacrament, you know? It is, it is and it's, it is potentially one of the, the most powerful things humans can do. Yeah, and you could argue that it is the most powerful thing that. He, well, it is the art things. of cre- the act of creation, right. isn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man. I I'm with you, and I I completely agree. Hmm. But is that <laughs> is it an accurate observation? That's yeah. the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is an accurate and, observation. And then therefore, but and I'll I'll actually allow you to ask the question that I I answered for you, even though I asked it of you. What? What was the question? What do you get from it? What, what what does what are we extracting or are we extracting anything healthy from transient encounters sexual encounters I hasten to add hmm. are we extracting anything healthy or beneficial I guess healthy and beneficial are different in this context mm-hmm. healthy meaning that it's a it's a fair exchange it's uh, mutually beneficial in a way that's healthy, meaning that it's it's productive, meaning that it's fulfilling, meaning that it's it leaves both people feeling good, so to speak. I don't really like to use that word good, but feeling positive, feeling like they weren't neither person was exploited. Mm-hmm. It was an equitable exchange. Well, I, I mean, I would, I would say that, yeah, every time it is, it doesn't mean that it's healthy, though. No, because and I, I think also people will tell themselves that, that was an equitable exchange. Yeah. I yeah. got what I want. I came, he came. Yeah, but then it's very transactional. The end, exactly. Yeah, it's... I, 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 <laughs> it's such a terrific, it's such a complicated situation. Complex. Because to ask anyone their opinion of it, you, you we'd need to understand their sight, their psychological pathology yeah well I think that ah, it's such uh, getting back to the what do I get out of it was that the question yeah hmm I don't know well <laughs> I don't know I think, I, I, think, I think maybe you should answer that I question I think there's something profound <laughs> just happened let me die in peace in peaceful fields full of wheat and a breeze with sweet some place where we all grew our own food. 
in community with friends and family that love the sea and they love to see when I'm doing really good. <laughs> well, I do know. I, I think that I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy, perhaps I enjoy this, this drama of samsara too much. <laughs> Maybe I'm really in a place right now where I'm, in, I'm overindulging in that drama. Mm-hmm. Not that there's a lot of drama between me and, and people that I hang out with. Sometimes there is, but... Well, I got a question for you. Sorry yeah, to yeah. interrupt. Where, there have been times when we've been out and about and, and we see, and you, you nod at a woman and she nods at you. Mm-hmm. And, there's, and it's, I, I dare I say, more often than not, there's, it's like a frosty exchange. <laughs> and I say, Tinder date? And you say, yeah, another Tinder date. So, well, not always, though. I think the, the times that, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, though. So but I, it put people so I wonder, that I've why are hung they fr- out with why if if it was a if it was a healthy okay let's meet up mm-hmm. di- go to dinner bump uglies as the youth would say <laughs> bump and, uglies and then My we, dad sh- used to use that. we shake hands thank one another for the transactional sex and then we part ways with a big mm-hmm. smile on our face then why is it frosty when you see one mm-hmm. another again now yeah, that's a, a good question that's not accusational by the way I'm just no it's a good question interested. well I think that like, I've seen his penis. Yeah, I mean that's that's part of it. It's like, yeah, it's there's there's something deeper going on there, and I don't mean deeper in the sense that it's uh, a healthy kind of depth, <laughs> but the the pathology runs a little bit deeper, if that's uh, accurate to say it like that. The reason, well, to answer your question, the reason it's frosty is because maybe it was it was too much too soon. Yep. And maybe it was under the wrong, I say wrong, it was under the, the not healthiest circumstance. Perhaps it was alcohol involved, it was the... No, the, not really, actually. That's actually very rare there's alcohol okay. involved okay. for me. That's yep. like, that's incredibly rare. It's usually just, yeah, that like almost never happens actually where I'm really drunk. Or they're so drunk. is it more of a, like a sudden passionate... Well, yeah, I think getting back to how we started the conversation, Mm -hmm. that people that are traveling here, people that have spent some time here, the vibrational heart stuff that we talked about earlier in the episode leaves you susceptible, like we said earlier, and I say susceptible intentionally (laughs) because it leaves people vulnerable to feeling that. And then me being here, me also feeling that, me feeling like, oh, well, it's it's impossible for me to, to date somebody here, but I'm human like anybody else, and I want to feel that. I feel susceptible. I feel vulnerable. We both do. We meet in that place. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, oh, whoa, wait. Yeah, maybe we should have taken our time with that. Maybe that wasn't a good idea to engage in that because we both opened ourselves up. We both felt vulnerable. To the... <clears throat> the furthest extent possible. Right. And then we both felt not good about it, and then we both backed away. And so there's some shame and regret. Yeah, there's some shame, there's some regret, there's some... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, th- I, and I, well, I get that. Yeah. And, and I can relate, by the way. It makes perfect sense to m- um, and correlates with my previous experiences of, of just uh, having casual sex with people too fast or diving into things too fast and then... And then finally catching up and realizing, wow, hang on a minute. Actually, yeah, there was a physical attraction or an intellectual attraction, but in reality, I'm not actually attracted to you. And you're, or you're not actually attracted to me. Well, exactly. And that's, that's another thing I wanted to say, that since I've been here and since my last serious relationship, my whole idea of what it means to be attracted mm. to someone has, I wouldn't say it's completely changed, but it is, I have a much... The, the irony of this is that I have a much clearer idea now of what it actually means to be attracted to somebody. I may not be practicing it. That and practicing it, but I have such a clear idea now because, I mean, you know, there are a lot of attractive people here, mm-hmm. a lot of young, attractive men and women. And because of that, I really don't even notice it anymore. Mm. I, I actually have gotten to the point where I'm like, yeah, I don't care. You know, there's attractive women all over the place. You know, I just walk out my front door and I see attractive women. It is a, it's, an incredibly 
a bizarre place like that, especially where we live. It, it's it, it's very a, bizarre. It's, it's an epicenter of uh, of attractive people. Hotness. I think, well, yeah, I think obviously the sun's shining, everyone's tanned. There's there's a gym on every corner. And yeah, it's fantasy land. And everyone's it's, surfing. So yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. Everyone's fit as a fiddle, aren't they? So yeah, everybody's half naked. Yeah. So there's that, but the but getting back to what I get out of it, I actually do just to maybe provide a little bit more context and like give a little bit more to these experiences that we're describing that because I do know that, that the people I actually connect with in a quasi romantic sexual way, I actually do feel very connected to them in a way that's not describable. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not a completely random thing. The people that I tend to, the women that I tend to interact with, there is there is some kind of drama that we're playing out there mm -hmm. that feels very much like it needs to be expressed. That maybe there is some kind of past life element to it. There is there is something that we know about each other. Oh, little cat! <laughs> there is a cat. There's a cute little the cat. periphery uh, that, that we know about each other, or that we need to that we need to work out. You know some trauma some drama some issue that we're, we're playing out and then maybe that is what I'm getting out of it is that I'm I'm learning these lessons over and over and over and over again because either I have to or I think I have to mm. or it's just purely physical I don't I don't know I, I get I get different things out of it sometimes sometimes I really just enjoy talking to people and it's it's hard to date here you know i can't date in my friend group like that's just not it's just not a thing because my friends are too important to me i don't want to fuck up my my dynamics with my friends i i love my friends in a different way so because of that i have this very very hard line i say like no this is this is my this is my friendship. This is my friend group. Like you're not going to get into that. If it's a romantic thing, you exist outside of that. I've got the walls up. <laughs> so yeah, I, I get what anybody else gets out of it and what we all want, which is some feeling of satisfaction, some feeling of intimacy, like you said early on, some feeling of connection through. Yeah. Connection, working through these, these problems and these traumas. Um, yeah. And it's, but I don't want that. You know, it's not sustainable at all. Well, I, I wondered when you were mm -hmm. going to get to that because I think that's the that's probably my observation mm -hmm. is having done that for many, many, many years. Yeah. And I did. I mean, I was I did online dating. It was like one of the first online dating sites there ever was. Oh, you're a pioneer. Because that's how old <laughs> I am. I was a pioneer in Buccaneer. You were doing the online dating when it was creepy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When, when we had to use a cassette to load up the internet. Um, anyway, and the world was black and white, but uh, I think, okay, you said some great, great stuff there. I'd just like to have a little pick over. Yeah. Yeah. Pick it over. Pick it up. Pick it over. One thing is you're absolutely right. Every exchange we have is an opportunity for a lesson mm -hmm. for you and for that person. Mm. It's an event or it's a story with several events chapters if you like and they're all opportunities for us to learn and in that regard we're all teachers and learners I don't believe that anyone's more evolved than another and more enlightened more enlightened than another we, we've just got different experiences um, different facets of our experience make us more experienced in certain areas compared to others and so on and so forth so we're all teaching each other well if the other is open to learning if they've got an open heart and mind so this has to play out this whole dating game business in samsari has to play out because it's part of the point but who was what did einstein say i'm going to paraphrase paraphrase einstein he said something like doing the same thing over and again and expecting something to change is the definition of insanity. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I would say a mistake's only a mistake if you learn nothing from it. Mm. Mm. I'll throw in the hat trick. There is no such thing as a mistake or failure. There is only learning. Mm -hmm. Now, assuming we 
come at it, we come at our life experiences, our encounters with one another, with that, with those little, you know, pros on the shelf, and we've got on, we've got an eye on them. Then I think we can, we absolutely can take away some some great intelligence, some data from our interaction with one another. But it's if we're not mindful, if we're not self-aware, if we're not self-realized, if we're not present. And then we're just diving into this stuff, basically because actually, and this is, I'm not saying this about you, by the way. I'm just talking about, um, I think a great many people now, we're fucked. We're emotionally broken, for and it's through no fault of our own. Yeah, and we're kind of destined to just keep doing it. We're just going to keep going around, in slamming circle, our head against the wall, slamming our penises, <laughs> um, you know, at things. Again, Martin's not specifically talking about me. No, 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 no. This is a much broader conversation. By the way, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody for using online uh, uh, dating apps, for example, either. I understand that that's a reality of, of, of life in the matrix now, but, but I do have to wonder when the, hot, the entire encounter, all of the mystery and the fun... I'm going to sound like an old person now, right? The mystery of the fun of seeing someone across a room or meeting them at a dinner party or, you know, meeting them in a restaurant over a coconut, right? And, and, and you've never spoken before and then you have to open yourself up and you do that dance and then there's a, there's a joke and there's a smile and there's a joke and there's a laugh and, there's, and then there's a shift in body language and you're watching yeah, what happen yeah. between you. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen in online dating or with apps, <clears throat> but I'm saying there's a hack with dating yeah there is a hack with dating Absolutely. apps and, and, and I often I often wonder how healthy that is and I appreciate that people will say yeah well you know at the end of the day I'm just using it because I want to have transient relationships I just want to have sex yada yada and I'm not judging it but I, personally I having had hundreds of unhealthy sexual encounters I can absolutely speak I think with some experience and say with hindsight anyway, knowing, looking at the old version of me with that pathology, with a different pathology, it wasn't healthy at all. And actually all I was trying to do was distract myself to control my environment, to manipulate, not necessarily consciously, not necessarily in a Machiavellian way, although some of these, you know, some of these things did play out in a Machiavellian way. Mm -hmm. But all, it was all designed to make me feel better in my sandbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, I had nothing to do with that person. I was learning nothing from them, although I, I was. Ultimately, I, I, did, I did learn from them. But the point is, actually, I look back on the, all of those times now and I think, yeah, they weren't healthy. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't wish, I don't wish them to unhappen because had I not done all of that mad stuff in my life then, then I wouldn't be where I am now. So I'm super bloody grateful to Martin version 1.0. And we've had this conversation. Thanks for, thanks for the gift of trauma. Everyone in my life, including him. Thanks, thanks buddy. Thanks for the trauma you gave me as well. Mm -hmm. um, but all that said, my perspective now with hindsight is that it, it wasn't a healthy way to connect. And ultimately, what do we all want? I think we all want connection. We all want to die happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that. <laughs> but we well, yeah, we all do want connection because. But and I, this is. Whew, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Hmm. I guess it's about how we get that connection. Well, it, there's a good question because yeah. does does do we have to go off and copulate? With someone that we that we that we barely know, so clinical to connect, you know, copulate. You, well, you know, what I mean, like, you know, do do we do we need that the the absolute sexual connection to connect? I don't think we do. And I and and actually, I, I think I think if we were to connect, if 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 we are actually seeking just seeking connection, mm -hmm. not sexual gratification or control or or some fucked up perspective of of getting a cuddle. Um, if we are legitimately seeking a healthy connection, then, then that, that doesn't necessarily need to involve romance or, or uh, what's the word? Copulation? One night, one night, one night stands, yeah, copulation. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And I think that, yeah, 
ideally that that would be it that we would understand that there are many different ways to connect it's just the the male biology especially at yeah, but you can't blame the, it on biology because it's your young, body. The ripe young age of 37. You, as can't, I am. you can't blame it. You see, this is how you started. You, you, you provided the mitigation early on. Oh, it's my biology. Oh, I'm super good at you that. Can't bl- you can't I'm blame super. it on biology. No, you're, you're right. And I think you, that. You, yes, you've got a monkey suit, but the monkey is. We, we talked about the monkey. <laughs> Fucking monkey. The monkey. That monkey. The monkey shouldn't be driving the all cheeky, the time. Yeah, no, and the, I, I think about that a lot, actually. You saying the monkey. No, and I, I completely agree. And I'm going to take this conversation. And I'm going to let it simmer. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to think about everything. I'm going to think about my very wise friend, Martin, and his advice. And I know nothing. You do know nothing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You know nothing. I know nothing. No, you, and that will always be the way. You and I are very similar. And because you are, uh, my, in some ways, a mentor to me which I think it's fair to say that you are a mentor in some ways. I am humbled by those words. But it's true, though, and not just because you're a little bit older, not that much older. Um, but you look great, too, by the way. Being Very kind. Yeah. 46, 47 on November the 9th, in case anybody wants to send me any birthday wishes. Yeah, man. Birthday wishes, for sure. Yeah, but because you, you understand me and you know me in a way that I, I would think it's safe to say that not a lot of people do, that I take your advice and your guidance seriously i take it to heart i know that you're right i'm just i gotta i gotta keep fucking things up for a little bit longer there are some people who've been (laughs) listening to this episode for whatever one hour 42 seconds and gone yeah he finally (laughs) said it yeah what about i know that you're right yeah yeah Uh, oh you're 100 right it's not about being right i I, but it's not but i your observation is let's not say right your observation is is very very good it deserves a rummage, doesn't it? Oh, it deserves more than a rummage. I mean, it's it, you, you painted a very clear picture mm. about what's going on. However, there is the obstacle is the way. So this is my obstacle. And no matter what, exactly. no matter what you say to me, I'm, well, no, that's, that, that's not entirely true. I was going to say no matter what you say, I'm still going to you know, keep doing what I do. You keep playing it out. Yeah, but that's not necessarily true because you... Like you said, that we, we all are changing all the time. Mm-hmm. We all have the power to change in a way that's more beneficial for Hands us. Hands down. And just yeah. to be clear, you know I'm a huge fan of that. A leopard yeah, yeah, can yeah. change its spots and you can teach an old dog new tricks. See so the, yeah, yeah, I, anybody I agree. says, oh, he's never going to change, he's never going to change, and respectfully, that's your truth. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Anybody yeah. can change their life's direction in a heartbeat. Any age, any time, any location. And actually, more of us blooming grasped that, you know, and embraced that idea, we'd, I think we'd be in a different place. So, yeah, of course yeah, you can change. I, 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 I want that for you, but yeah. not because I want to, I want to control the way you're living your life. I just know, I know um, what alchemic beauty arises from, yeah. from making such changes. Yeah, absolutely. And you see, you've seen and experienced things that I have yet to see and experience. And you've, you've blazed this trail and you're like, dude, it doesn't have to be like that. Well, that's, that's the reality, isn't it? Yeah. It's choice. Yeah. Choice is a wonderful thing. It and we is. always have a choice. We do. And I, I have to say, to give myself a little bit of credit, I've been, I've been getting better. Mm-hmm. I think I think I, there's a there's an awareness there. I mean, it, for me, and I think you know this about me, and anybody that knows me well knows that there's never any shortage of self awareness. I'm mm. very I'm very aware, very introspective. It's just the other side of it. I'm like, but I'm well, doing it anyway. Well, I'm gonna fucking do it anyway. Yeah, but but be, I I'd suggest be mindful of that though, because yeah, yeah. we can we can say, and I agree with you. I think you are self aware, but I, I think we can say that we're self aware. There are degrees of awareness out there. We can say that we're self-aware, um, and it's almost it's a it's a hall pass, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. It means I'm self-aware, but I'm still doing it. But I'm doing it with a, with awareness. Mm, okay, does that make it any better or worse? No. Well, when I say I'm self-aware, it's just like yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's not like to give myself a pass or say no. that. It's more just to say yeah, 
Yeah, I get it. I but there are it. degrees of awareness. There are, absolutely. There are degrees of acceptance, there are degrees of forgiveness, there are degrees of love. All of this stuff is a journey, you know, and that's why it's called the hero's journey as far as I'm concerned. So, Dude. And it's, nothing you're doing is right or wrong. Everything is perfect for you right now, where you are, just yeah. as it is for me, just as it is for her, him, him, her, so on and so forth. And this dog. And that dog and that cat. But I... So we are, we're going to have a, an, an, an incredible being on the show soon. He's a chap called Pak Marta Ada. Oh, you're going to have Pak Marta Ada. Yeah. Nice. And, so, and he's one of my teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And he, uh, he uh, for the listeners who don't know, is uh, an incredible Balinese healer. Mm-hmm. This man actually cured himself of liver cancer. Oh, wow. Through a, using his own meditation technique. And he teaches something called the um, Tapa Brata, which is a seven-day silent retreat. Okay. So it's like Vipassana, for those of you that might be familiar, which is, uh, which is the, an Indian version that's a prolonged uh, silent retreat. Anyway, all this to say, I do wonder how you would get on if you were to completely disconnect. Because at this thing, there's no phones. There's no music. There's no pencils or pens or paper. No books. Mm-hmm. There's just Chris in Chris's head and Chris in Chris's heart mm-hmm. for seven days. You're not even, even though you're meditating with other people, you're not even to make eye contact. Right, yeah, I'm familiar. I haven't, yeah, I would, I'm interested. I've done things similar in concept on my own, not for that period of time. But I do very much believe in the power of, of disconnecting from everything and really letting yourself sit with your own thoughts. Well, it's the obstacle is the, is the way. It's yeah. that idea. Yeah. There, I mean, you know, people use the words silent retreat often. Yeah. Well, yeah. here they do. Obviously, maybe where you are in America or England or Finland, they're not using those words. I've got to tell you, I, even I threw the words around like they were uh, easy to use until I was... Day three. What silent retreat? Yeah, everywhere. just yeah, yeah. I'm going on a silent retreat, you know, like it's nothing. And then day three in this thing, I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, that'll yeah, this day three days of not intense. talking, no eye contact with anybody, and I've even heard of the the completely dark room silent retreat. Mm-hmm. What's that one called? I don't know, but you can do. You, you know what I'm talking about? People though? are doing caves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I it, perhaps perhaps that's not for you right now but I mean it could be no like I said I've experimented with a little bit of that not in such a structured environment where it's actually somebody that's really holding me to it it was mm-hmm. more just my own uh, personal mm. endeavor well you're I also would... you're also learning a certain meditation mm. technique yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the fundamental point and it's essentially it's, it's called a loving kindness meditation I, I don't want to give it all away because we're going to talk about it in an episode with Pat Murta but it's you are you are sending love to the universe, mm-hmm. literal love, actually, the frequency. You, you know, you're encouraged to say, may all beings be happy, which derives from the Sanskrit, loka samasta suki no bhavantu, which means may all beings be happy, free, and yada yada, which we talked about in the last podcast. Right. Um, yeah. It talks about how may my, my actions um, have a, an incredible effect on others. So the point is, it's a selfless meditation. It starts with that, but then it directs into self. And then at the end, he invites you to, to, to turn that meditation on yourself. Anyway, I can, I, I reckon I'm talking about it because I had such a profound experience myself. I would love to do it. I would absolutely love to do it. Mm. Yeah. Let's anyway, do it. Well, it's food for thought. I want to do it. Let's we do it right have now. rambled on for two hours. Oh, wow. It's already two hours. Yeah. Damn. I know. I always feel like that when we have a conversation. Ah. I hope the audience does it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see Actually, how they feel. Did you turn off after 35 minutes? Well, if they did, they won't be hearing this. So. Well, you bloody missed out on some podcast gold then, didn't you? Yeah, you know? Martin really dug deep. He got me to open up. Yeah, which is a rarity, so good on you. Yeah. And, and actually, I mean, that's open one, up in that way. Well, that's one that's... thing I'd like to say, actually. All power to you. Kudos to you for the vulnerability and for the authenticity. You know, this is not a conversation you can crack and... and absolutely nail in in two hours it's it's a conversation that we need to keep having i think but uh, ultimately if we are realizing who we are and how we're behaving we are then exercising some level of self self self-awareness and we are opening 
even a little little gate yeah. in the castle. You know, it might be around the back. You know, like a little sneaky exit out of the out of the whole arrangement. Then at least we're doing some work that's, that begins to express vulnerability, um, that that opens us up to people. Because that ultimately, in my experience, when we've got closed hearts, that's the biggest, the the the, the most troubling job. Yeah. It's opening up. Yeah, I'm not opening up to you. You could hurt me. Mm-hmm. Of course, the poor bastard who was on the other receiving end of that could be the nicest, loveliest person on the planet, and they're going, mm, "I'm not going to hurt you. I've, I've, I've got good intentions. I don't know you. I don't care. You could be the nicest person on the planet. The reality is, you could hurt me. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm actually going to act in a preventative way, and I'm just going to stick the shutters up, and then you're never going to be able to hurt me. But then you're never going to be able to love me, and I'm never going to be able to love you." And am I loving myself by doing that? Yeah, I, 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 I dig that a lot. And that's what I really appreciate about this. And then we can let you end the show however you want to end it. But what I appreciate is that, like I said before, you're one of the few people that can really get me to open up in that way. And you've done a very good job of doing it. Like, we, we, we feel like we're all alone here. We, know we're a <laughs> we are in a bustling <laughs> restaurant yeah. surrounded by people. But we're having a conversation that you and I would normally have uh-huh. between in, the in, two in, of in us. In this restaurant. Yeah. In this restaurant. Mm-hmm. But it just so happens that this is, <laughs> is going to come up on the podcast channel and people are going to listen to it, which is, it's very rare. Like, it's, I mean, the, the process of me opening up has been going on for a while now, but I appreciate your ability to provide a space where I feel like it's okay to open up. I forget sometimes that people are going to listen to this and I'm like, Oh fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it, Martin. (laughs) Yeah. I'm over that now. When you realize you just, you're telling your deepest, darkest secrets and thoughts and everything on a, on a podcast. But I, but I, I also think I am told and feel and also feel that it's uh that's what people are finding so refreshing well yeah exactly it's beautiful it's a really beautiful thing so i appreciate the opportunity to talk about it Mm. i appreciate you coming on the show again yeah man no it's so fun i love that we're doing it here at cella yeah and yeah i know i I hope she uh i hope she lets us do more here because it's uh it's a really good vibe you think she will yeah i would imagine so i think it's quite it's a nice it's as you say we we have these conversations all the time in places Mm. like this so the idea that it's just like you and me having a a typical conversation yeah but there are cameras and microphones here that's what i love about these conversations yeah it's nothing staged about this is you know not even (laughs) there's no agenda well what what should we talk about today well yeah yeah it's it's so good and yeah the last one looked and sounded so good so hopefully this one looks and sounds as good well once i've done the editing job we shall see fingers crossed my friend right well uh what else can i say thanks to everybody for listening thanks to everybody for putting up with the lack of episodes um, I fully appreciate that one of the things us podcasters are supposed to do is is turn up regularly, but you know it's super hard work when you have writing the book, sorts. man. You're totally, cut yourself some slack. Totally, but I, you know, we love doing this, and uh, we still get people uh, contacting us to give us phenomenal feedback. So thank you to everybody who listens, to everybody who watches. Please give us a shout out on your social media. Please like and comment and all that other stuff that helps these algorithms um, give us a bump up. And thanks to lis- thanks for listening to How to Die Happy. Should I say anything else? What do you want to say? <laughs> I'm kidding. You should have finished off with like love, something to do with love. What is love? <laughs> Baby, don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. Don't, don't hurt, hurt me no more. more. <laughs> Such a great song. Was that Night at the Roxbury? Okay.